What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday. Uh, for me, 10 days completely off of Kratom. Well, correction. At 7 o'clock tonight, that will officially be 10 days off of Kratom. How am I doing? Uh, pretty well. Um, I would say last night was a pretty big step in the right direction in getting my uh, sleep schedule kind of back on track. Granted, for those who have been watching me for a while, you already know I have an infant at home. And when they're really young like this, you know, under four months, under three months, under two months, the best thing to do is just keep them in the room with you. You know, our other bedrooms are completely on the other side of our home. We have a, what, 2,500 square foot home. So, um, you know, when you have to get up three, four times throughout the night anyway, it just makes more sense to have um, the baby right there beside you in a bassinet. So um, with that, you know, that obviously is affecting my sleep schedule outside of coming off of Kratom. But as far as the Kratom aspect of my uh, sleep schedule and coming off of Kratom, pretty good doing pretty good. Um, I slept pretty well last night. Um, the discomfort that I've kind of been experiencing in my chest um, definitely was a lot less last night. And I've found that to be the case in the past as well. Um, it's kind of like you struggle, you struggle, you struggle. It gets a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. And then finally, you get to that one night, whether it's at the nine day or the 10 day or the 11 day mark, whenever it is, and then you're just completely off. Now, a lot of people wonder like, dude, you tapered, you know, you did a slow taper. I mean, you were down to four, then three and a half, then two and a half, and then your last dose was 0.5 grams. I had somebody ask me the other day, like, I, um, he said, I thought your last dose was 0.5 grams. You're telling me you're still having trouble sleeping after nine days? So I want to explain something here. When you've been taking something like Kratom for a long period of time, months, especially years, like a lot of us have been doing, like I had been doing, um, you have to remember the tolerance uh, of Kratom. You know, if you take Kratom for a long extended period of time, you build up a tolerance for that. Well, what does a tolerance mean? A tolerance literally means it builds up in your system. So when you get to a point where you're coming way down off of it and you're barely taking any amount and you're down to the one gram, the 0.5 grams, whatever it is, you still have Kratom stored up in your fat cells, right? You still have Kratom stored up in your system. Um, it all, all substances like this have a half-life, meaning your fat cells store them, and depending on what the half-life is of those substances, they can stay in your fat cells for a long period of time, kind of like marijuana does, and it kind of slowly tapers itself out, or you can get a lot of it stored up in your fat cells, and it releases it, and it releases it pretty quickly, but when you've gotten it stored up in there, and you have large amounts of it from, you know, continued uh, long-term use, then what? You know, you can get down to the lower amounts where you're barely taking any, and then your body is still, even after you completely stop, is in the process of letting go of a little bit at a time at a time. It doesn't happen just like that. You know, it takes days uh, and sometimes weeks for your body to completely rid yourself of that toxin well you know whether it's kratom or whether it's something else so um so yeah i you know it's not my first time to the rodeo and i'm actually not surprised at all um even though you know i did do a slow taper and you know for sarah in fact i've been off of the kratom completely for 10 days now but i was down below five four grams three grams i was down to those lower amounts that's been what three weeks now um, so in a lot of people's eyes, it would seem like, what, you're still having trouble? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And again, last night was a good step in the right direction, but, um, but, but yeah, man, um, you know, 
everything's good now I'd say my energy is probably about 90% absolutely zero physical withdrawals uh, to be noted at this point no cold chills I don't necessarily feel tired I mean I have some mental moments throughout the day where I'm like damn I'm kind of bored you know you know I've spent years of my life just dosing on something like Kratom to give me this mood elevation and it's something that you get accustomed to right something that you get used to throughout time and then so when you go and you uh, completely stop that abruptly it's gonna take a while before your brain switches itself around and then that not using becomes your new norm at first your body and your mind are gonna be like where's the kratom where's the kratom normally when I'm doing this task at work I'm high on kratom normally when I'm doing this task at home I'm high on kratom normally when I'm at the gym or I'm working out I'm high on kratom so it feels off right it feels off at first to do those things without being under the influence of Kratom but anyway um, up to 312 subscribers right now if you appreciate this transparency and a guy out here who's just trying to give people a blueprint so they can get out of that uh, ball and chain if they can stop being a slave to something like Kratom now there's people out, I'm not campaigning against Kratom there are people out there that need it um, that are good with their use and if that's you I'm not talking to you um, you're still welcome I, I still would love to have you as a subscriber for inf informational purpose purposes if that relationship that you have with Kratom ever changes um, but no one knows what your relationship with Kratom is better than you right but I will tell you nine out of the ten comments that I get from people are people just like me who have slipped down that slippery slope. Some of them slipped all the way down the slope and fell off the cliff. And, and these people are coming to me saying, I appreciate your videos. Our stories sound very, very similar. Um, I hate the withdrawals. The withdrawals are horrible. I'm trying to do a taper. I really want to get off of this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. I hear it all on here. And you can just go, um, if you're curious, um, how most people's relationship with Kratom, people who are regular users of it. If you're curious as to how those people are getting along with their Kratom use, just jump in my comments, bro. <laughs> just jump in my comments and look. You know, 95% of the comments that you get are people saying just what I just said to you. You know, that they're not happy with where they are. They're not happy with how Kratom makes them feel. They feel slave to it. They feel locked in by it. They want to come off of it, and they're trying to figure out um, the best way to do that. You know, and that's mostly what you see in the comments. Um, but if you appreciate the transparency, if you're a Kratom user, if you're a person that's just happened up on my channel, and uh, you love the fact that there's someone here just giving their story, and um, there's support in the comments, there's people that can tell you how to taper, things that you can use to help with tapering and cold turkey and things like that. And, and, you know, I'm on here just to motivate people, you know, to change, to do something better, grow through struggle. No one ever grew from being comfortable. You will never grow from being cold and comfortable. All right. When a sword gets formed, does it get formed when it's cold? Or do you have to put it into the fire and get it hot? You know, to where it's malleable and then you can form it and you can shape it and you can move it around and form it to how you want it to be, right? Humans are no different. We are not dissimilar to those swords that are forged in fire. Your character, your personality, everything about you needs to be forged in fire. That's the way you're going to grow. So subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this sort of content and... um we're going to go on from there. So um, I had a comment uh, the other day that I wanted to read uh, from a gentleman who's kind of new to the channel. His name is Nicholas. And uh, Nicholas, thank you, bro. Um, I'll, I'm going to read his comment, and then I'm going to also read my response to his comment. And then we're just going to kind of expand on it. Um, so, so 
what what set this comment up is in my last video I was discussing how you know there's triggers and there's certain things as a Kratom user that you would do in your everyday life that you typically would dose on Kratom for before doing those activities right for a lot of us that was about everything before you went and did some sort of social event and, and hung out with people, well, take some Kratom. Uh, before you go to work, well, it's a good, good time to take some Kratom. So I'll get, my mood will be lifted while I'm at work, right? You know, you go see your parents. Well, let me take some Kratom so I can be happy when I'm around my parents. You know, there's no more, well, I'm just happy without it. You know, if you're one of those people who has become dependent upon something like Kratom and you're addicted to something like Kratom, there is no more... Well, I just won't take it, and I'll be happy. I'll be happy. I'll be fine. No, because we've talked about this. Because if you're using on a regular, ongoing basis for a long period of time, your baseline mood is now down here, unless you are hiked up on kratom, right? So there is no more just making the easy decision to. Well, I'm going to this party or whatever. Just you know, a few people hanging out. I don't really drink, um, but you know, I'm just not going to take any kratom. I'll be good. No, there's none of that. You're taking Kratom, right? And, and for those of you out there who are regular Kratom users and have been for a while, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Most of you aren't lying to yourself. I see it in the comments. Most of you know where you're at with Kratom. There are some people out there lying to themselves. Um, so if you are lying to yourself and you want to jump in the comments and say, Oh, I take it all the time and I don't have any problems with just not taking it. I go places all the time and don't take it. We don't like liars on this channel, so don't even bother, all right? <laughs> even though we all probably come from a background of lying because we're addicts, right? That's what addicts do. You know, just as sure as we're breathing, we're lying. Um, well, I'm not these days, but, um, but it's, I've been there. I've been there. All right, so uh, that's what this comment is, is related to. He said, dude, I do the same thing with shopping myself. Taking Kratom before you shop. I think it's been one of the hardest things breaking that association with certain activities we enjoy on Kratom. Kratom can give us those feelings of enhancing those activities, which adds another layer of difficulty to quitting. I'm curious about what you have been doing to break those thought patterns. Love everything you do, brother. Keep it going. I'm down to five grams per day, dosing two capsules about every three hours. I was also curious if you had ever addressed taking Kratom on an empty versus full stomach. Did you ever find yourself trying to time your dose around meals? Um, he says, did you ever find yourself trying to time your dose around meals? More like, did you not? Was there a time that you didn't plan your dose around meals? I always planned my dose around meals. And for people who are really accustomed to taking Kratom, yeah, you know, you get better effects and better absorption of the Kratom on an empty stomach. So I absolutely, if, if I was going to be taking Kratom within any of the close foreseeable future, that had to happen before I ate, right? That's just, that's like clockwork for me. So uh, the answer to that question is, yeah, that's absolutely part of it. Um, and I would say if you're a person that would eat and then take Kratom, then I would also say you are a novice. You're a newbie. You're a rookie. <laughs> you're a rookie to the world of Kratom uh, because those of us who have been doing it for a while know, nah, you take the Kratom first and you absolutely plan your doses around your meals. But, um, that, that is also, if you really think about that, you know, that is, goes back to, you know, uh, the, the rats in the laboratory study, in some cases, choosing, um, heroin over food, right? I mean, it becomes that sort of priority for you is, dude, I'd rather, you know, you, you, if you put a plate of food in front of me, if you're a heavy Kratom user and you put, um, a nice plate of food, home cooked food in front of me, and then you put, you know, an MIT shot or you put a, um, or, or you put some Kratom capsules in front of me. Which one do you think a Kratom user is going to take first? Be honest. Be honest. Exactly. You're taking the Kratom first so that you can then really enjoy that nice juicy steak and that 
big old juicy baked potato or whatever it is, right? So uh, yeah, that was a good point. And um, I think that's a good indication for people to look at. If you find yourself dosing your kratom and planning your kratom doses around when you eat your meals, you're on the right channel. That means you're hooked. That means you're addicted. And that means you probably need to curtail your use. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to mention here, so um, Nicholas says, I'm curious about what you've been doing to break those thought patterns about, you know, making associations of, oh, well, when I, when I do this or when I go shopping, I always take Kratom first. Um, that's a very good question. Um, and, and I think, I think that it's important to note that that is a very good question, but the answer, um, you you'd be surprised about the answer. And, and my direct answer, immediate answer to that is, well, you don't really break the thought patterns, right? Um, there is no magic pill, no pun intended. Um, there is, there is no magic pill to breaking those thought patterns other than staying busy, keeping yourself engaged in something else. But let's look a little deeper into that. And uh, this is something that is a big part of recovery. Some of you may have heard this analogy before. Some of you may not have heard this analogy. But uh, it is similar to, uh, there's something in recovery called not feeding the pig or feeding the pig. All right. And I want you to think of the pig as your addiction. Okay. Now, if you feed this pig, if you get, if you continue to give this pig a meal, in other words, your drug, you continue to give it its drug of choice, this pig is going to grow bigger. It's going to grow stronger. It's going to grow fatter. And the more you feed it, the more food it is going to want from you. Okay. And the idea in not feeding the pig is don't feed the addiction. Okay. If you don't feed the pig on Monday and then you don't feed the pig again on Tuesday and you don't feed the pig again on Wednesday, then Thursday, then Friday, then Saturday, then Sunday, and you force yourself to do the same thing the very following week and then the week after that and then the week after that guess what eventually is going to happen to that pig pig can't live without food bro <laughs> I mean, this is an elementary question right here you know all of you can get this one you you don't have to be you know, you don't have to be Jeopardy material to get this one. You don't feed the pig, the pig's going to die eventually, right? Um, but it's absolutely a true statement. A lot of times people want to look at well, what specific things can I do? There has to be, you know, uh, some sort of magic number here. There has to be some sort of, you know, magic step to not to not have this thought of wanting to use every time I go to the store or every time I go to a friend's house or every time I go here or every time I go there or every time I get home from work, you know, they, we have all these triggers. People want to compartmentalize those things and, and say, uh, well, you know, how do I make these things go away? Time, time, time and not feeding the pig. Again, if you feed the pig, the pig's going to grow stronger. The addiction's going to grow stronger. The addiction is going to demand more from you. It's going to yell louder at you the more you feed it, right? Don't feed it. If you don't feed it, the pig, the addiction, will get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker over time. And, you know, the truth is... A lot of people want to hear, well, you know, how can I make this easier? How can I make, you know, the, the gnawing in my brain to use, 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 use at first when you first come off of it? How can I make that? How can I dumb that down a little bit? How can I numb it down a little bit? How can I make that go away? You can't. 
Sorry to break it to you. You've done that to yourself. You've fed the pig over and over and over and over and over relentlessly. For however long you've been using Kratom, you have fed this pig. The pig is big. The pig is fat. The pig is strong. And the pig is hungry. And he is going to... Watch out for the pig demonstration. I, I didn't practice that, believe it or not. I thought it was pretty good. I'm just saying. <laughs> not bad for a guy who didn't grow up on a farm, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this shit really goes off the rails, doesn't it? Um, the pig is strong because you've been feeding the pig. So the pig is going to be in your ear all the time to take something. But if you stop feeding it, and if you just go into autopilot mode, avoid the triggers, do whatever you have to do. I don't care if you have to drive around your ass to get to your elbow. Do whatever you have to do. Drive to a different part of town. Drive to the neighboring, neighboring city and then circle around. Just do whatever you have to do to not use. Okay? It's not a thought. It's an action. Okay, people are trying to change the thought before changing the action. Does not work that way. Does not work that way. In this case, it does not work that way. Change the action first. Don't use. Continue that trend. Do whatever you have to do to continue that trend. Don't use, don't use, don't use, don't use. Eventually, the pig dies off and you learn a new habit. You learn a new normal, and then guess what? Eventually, the pig's not going to be snorting in your ear all the time. You need to use. You need to use. We're going to the store. You need to use. Oh, we're going over to your parents' house. You need to use. Oh, you're supposed to go over to your friend's house tonight. You need to use. Eventually, all of that is going to stop. Now, listen, there's a reality for uh, people who are drug addicts. You know, we are always going to be more prone to going back and using something like Kratom, something that has an opiate-like effect, than someone who's never had any experience with it and never been addicted to it, right? Those memories are always going to be there, and there's always going to be triggers that, you know, you, you could be clean for 10 years and then be walking down the street and and a particular smell of, I don't know, some restaurant, a burger that's, that you smell coming out of the restaurant can remind you of this time 10 years ago when you were at the beach and you were high on Kratom and you guys ate the best burger that you ever had in your life. And then you could be tempted just like that, right? That's something that you're, you're just always going to deal with. But the idea of the thought hits you and you're just like, oh my God. Oh, give me some Kratom right now. Ah, shoot it into my, tie me off, shoot it into my vein. You know, that will, will numb down. That will go away. That will get quieter with time, with time, with time, with time clean, right? But a lot of times people are just looking for this, you know, magic step that's just going to, you know, take any of those triggers and any of those, um, uh, what do you call it when you're when you're craving the cravings that's going to take those cravings away um it doesn't happen immediately took you a while to get yourself into it it's going to take you a little while to dig your way out of it it's just the nature of the beast man it's the nature of the pig you know but you have to go into autopilot mode just make sure that you're not using and it's not a thought it's an action make sure you don't use and if you do that long enough, then not using is going to become your new normal. And at that point, you, as a human, you've adapted to this new way of life, and it's not going to be as hard anymore. You know, you'll still have moments here and there where something reminds you of it, and you're like, oh, damn, sure would be nice to take Kratom. But you're not going to have this pig just, you know, in your ears. It's just not going to happen. So, um... 
Anyway, no more pig demos. No more pig snorting for this guy. All right? I'm above that. I'm absolutely not above that. Obviously. <laughs> oh, man. That was a good one. Um, so, so really, I'm not going to read my comment to him. Uh, thank you, Nicholas. That was a great question, man. A great comment. Um, and, and his response was, and I appreciate this sort of feedback. He said, Un unbelievable advice, Corey. Thank you so much for the perspective. It makes so much sense when you put it that way. I told him about the pig, right? I gave him the pig scenario. It's blowing my mind that I'm getting this kind of help from a person who understands and can illustrate this stuff so well. I really appreciate it. Hey, brother, it is my pleasure. I really appreciate you tuning into the channel and receiving it. You know, um, it, it's, it all starts with you, bro, and, and, and ma'am, and sister, and whoever you are out there. It all starts with you. You know, you have to be receptive to these things. You know, and I'm no... I'm no genius, I'm no mental health counselor, I'm no drug addiction specialist, but um, you know, a lot of the things that I've learned, I've learned from the School of Hard Knocks, I've learned through challenging myself in physical feats in the gym, you know, challenging myself mentally, and um, just giving you a blueprint. That's all I'm doing, just giving you guys a blueprint. But uh, Nicholas, thank you so much, bro, for the comment. Um, and I got a couple of minutes left here. What have I got? About nine, eh, about eight or nine minutes left. Uh, so I jotted down some things earlier and uh, I wanted to kind of impart some knowledge to you guys after I take a sip of this coffee here. So I was listening to this um I go on YouTube sometimes and I listen to these motivational uh, speeches and it'll be like a compilation, you know, some of it will be Jordan Peterson, um, some they'll have, you know, some of David Goggins in there, various other, you know, um, uh, motivational speakers and stuff like that and they'll have it in like this compilation video that's like an hour long and sometimes I'll listen to that stuff, you know, and some of it is not necessarily directly related uh, to drug addiction. Um, and getting yourself off of drugs, but you would be shocked. You would be shocked. Like 90% of it, I'm just like, crap, let me write that down. Crap, let me write that down. Crap, I want to write that down. Because as you know, as drug addicts, um, it is a disease of immediate gratification. I mean, that that is the disease in a nutshell of immediate gratification. You want, and you want it now, you want to be comfortable right now. You want to be numb right now. And listen, being happy right now in this moment is not a good plan for your future. You know, I want to eat three slices of cake right now and then go lay down on the couch and go to sleep. And how is that going to help me tomorrow? It's not. In fact, it's going to hurt me tomorrow, right? So you have to make, we talked about yesterday, making these little micro choices and these micro decisions that these micro choices add up to be your life, okay? These micro decisions that you're making every 30 seconds, every minute, every minute and a half, every two minutes are adding up to your life, okay? Now, where's your life going to be? What kind of micro decisions are you making, you know? Um, where are you investing your energy where you're not getting anything in return? Think about that. What are you investing your energy in where you are receiving no reward or no growth or anything in return? If you're an addict, my guess is there's quite a lot of things that you're investing your energy in that's not doing you any good. Using Kratom all the time, sitting on the couch, scrolling through social media all the time, not doing anything. Now listen, I want you to I want you to listen to my videos. So I'm not saying I'm not going to I'm not going to ask people to subscribe to my channel and listen to my videos and then 
turn around and you know give you a backhanded compliment by saying good job on subscribing and watching my videos but get off your damn phone all the time get off the couch <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense right listen to my videos put a freaking earbud in your ear and get your ass out there and do something productive that's what i want you to do go for a put an earbud in your ear and go jog around the neighborhood or go walk at a very heavy pace while you're listening to my material okay that's what i want you to do i want you to put an earbud in and go to the freaking gym and get after it and challenge yourself you know and and listen to my material that's what i want you to do that's what i'm encouraging you to do right but when people constantly are putting their energy into things that they are not receiving anything in return from you know that's why you see people that are tired weary and you know your days are just boring and mundane and so, because you're not putting your energy into something that can become a productive pursuit for you you have to put your energy into something that is going to pay you back with a benefit later and if you're not doing that you're gonna stay stuck bro you're gonna stay stuck sister um so I've already talked about the, the sword in the fire analogy. That's a real thing, you know. And I want you to think about, um, you know, that show Forged in Fire. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, where they take they make these really awesome swords and, like, different weapons and stuff like that. And, and you know, how do they mold and shape and form that metal? Got to put it through the fire first. You don't take a metal blade out of a freezer of comfortability and start bending it and shaping it and molding it and forming it. No. Nah. You know, if you want to be malleable in your life, in other words, you want to be able to grow and be shaped and formed and, and moved into something better in your life, gotta put yourself in the fire gotta put yourself in the fire challenge yourself when you meet that challenge it is magical you want some magic in your life you know get rid of this aversion to pain and this aversion to feeling uncomfortable and thinking that you always have to be uncomfortable it's going to be hard I promise you you will get through it you will survive it and when you survive it and when you come out on the other side you would have added layers of strength and resiliency and perseverance and drive and confidence to your very character to your very being it's not a lie it's not a lie it is the absolute truth I just want you guys to believe it. I mean, if you want to win the battle, then the war, you have to have a high threshold for pain. You will be hurt. You will be offended. There will be times where you feel like the victim. But what you will ultimately realize is that you're not the victim. You're the survivor. You're not a victim. You are a survivor. Because if it's not killed you, it's done what? Ding, 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 ding. What do we have for him, Alex? That's right. It will make you stronger. There is a reason, uh, reason that that is one of the most popular sayings. You know, and people say it all the time. Oh, you know, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. You know, some 400-pound man with a belly out to here. Oh, just, you know, parroting. The, the phrase, well, whatever doesn't kill you will make you stronger. You don't know shit about that. No offense. I, I not to, I'm not trying to... I, sh I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Um, shouldn't have said that because I'm not here to pick on obese people or overweight people. But... Um, <laughs> mm, how you look and how your body looks 
mirrors how you feel in here and how you feel in here. Oh, wait a minute. In here. So, <laughs> think back to uh, my anatomy day. Okay, the heart's more on the left, more on the left side. Um, you know, obese people are used have an aversion to pain. They have an aversion to feeling uncomfortable. They find comfort in food, and they find discomfort in getting out there and challenging themselves. So, how you look in your body mirrors how you feel in here and in here. And that's why I get on here and preach about this all the time. I know I sound like a broken record, but I would not lie to you. You get out there and you challenge yourself, you will learn things about yourself. It will strip away all social status. You know, I talked about this yesterday. It doesn't matter if you got a million bucks in the bank or 10 bucks in the bank. You know, that 10 mile run in the hot sun is going to affect you the same way. Challenge yourself physically, challenge yourself mentally, challenge yourself emotionally, allow yourself to feel the struggle, allow yourself to feel the pain because your minds and your body's response to those things and to those, um, those difficult times and those stressful times and that struggle is going to be what? To grow stronger. Like a tree. As a tree grows. Do you know what actually strengthens trees? Strong wind. Look it up. Trees that grow in environments and habitats where it's very strong wind. Guess what? Trees are bigger. The trees are bigger. The trees are stronger. Why is that? You get it. You get it. All right. Check back with me tomorrow. Love you guys. Hope this has helped. Um, support each other. Use this channel as your accountability mirror. Talk to other people. Look through the comments. Give people ideas. Tell, tell us where you're at, where you plan to be. Um, stay focused with it. We're here to pull you out of that shit storm trap that you've gotten yourself into. And, um, you know... I mean, this is my accountability mirror. You know, I thank you guys. I do. Because you guys have really helped me stay the course. Because if I didn't have to be accountable for all of you, over 300 people now, you know, probably would have slipped, to be honest with you. But through this process, I can feel myself getting stronger daily. It's a beautiful thing. All right, love you all. Subscribe to the channel. If you've not, like the video and leave a comment down below. Let me know where you're at. Peace.